First of all, I want to ask to you uh, what kind of interpretation did you make of fairy tales in respect of uh, interpretation uh, in Freudian style like uh, those of Eric Fromm, for instance? Yes, yes. or Bruno Bettelheim, yes. Or Bruno Bettelheim, yes. Well, I, I gave a Jungian interpretation and that is a complete reversal. Namely, it is not applying concepts or identifying the images of the fairy tale. We identify them with concepts and say this is repressed sexuality, this is uh, a problem of puberty and so on, this is, this is. But on the contrary, to try to listen to the message of these symbols, to, to take a passive mental attitude and to, by the method of amplification, that means by enriching it with parallel image, try to intuitively guess to what unknown factor it is aiming at. We look at fairy tales like at collective dreams, yeah. because they are naturally invented by storytellers, by individuals, but only those remain successful and survive the centuries which express general human problems. Could you make an uh, example about uh, one specific? Well, uh, a very. I, I, I don't want to. Rather, let's take a, a specific motif. Uh, the hero is very often a do, so called doomling, stupid, and lazy. Now, uh, this is a compensatory image to the fact that in Western collective consciousness we overestimate. Uh, achievement and success and therefore the naive uh, stupid chap who is genuine and therefore related to his instincts, he generally has a helpful animal who tells him what to do, that would be uh, the genuine man who is related to his instinct versus the intellectual or collectively thinking man and he's generally the savior or the one who marries the princess and becomes the new king. He's the bringer of a conscious or cultural renewal. That is one motif which yes. you find very often. You, you know that Italy is a country where politics is very important. Yes. You know that now many Italian writers are writing a, a daily fable on a uh, no, Tales yes. or fables um, whose persons are not magic or strange yes. or little or very big, yes. but uh, are um, the persons of the all day's life. Yes. And the meaning of this story is always uh, uh, politic, yes. rational, yes. epic. Yes. What's uh, your opinion about this? My opinion this it is it is no value whatsoever because it does not express genuinely the unconscious and therefore the deeper nature. And therefore these things have an effect for a few weeks or months and then they are forgotten again. The, 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 when you see the activation of political interest in Italy is because there is a certain spiritual crisis yes, and people are searching okay. for new values and the new values always come you have it in the midst of Christ they come in Bethlehem in the most unexpected place yes. and you can't produce a renewal from consciousness we see that with a neurotic patient, he is generally quite intelligent and he tries to solve his problem with ethical attitudes, programs and so on. That, that does not help whatsoever. He has to wait till from the much deeper depth of his instinctual psyche, okay. the new solution comes up. Uh, I know that Jung uh, was your analyst for a long period. Yes. Uh, what's uh, your um, memory, your image of the man Jung? Oh, that for I couldn't. A public that is not a public. <laughs> I couldn't. A psychologist, a psychiatrist, and so Jung on. had so many facets. 
yes. and was such a surprising personality that though I knew him 28 years, I could have never predicted how and what he, he would be or what he would say or do. Yes. He, that was perhaps the most striking. He was such an innovator, always spontaneous, always surprising, a bit like a fairy tale trickster. You, th you thought of meeting the great man, and there came out the joyful little boy. Then you thought of playing with the joyful little boy, and came out the most earnest philosopher. Then you thought he would scold you, and you, he met you with the greatest warmth and feeling and understanding. Then I reckoned that he would father you, and he coldly put you on your own feet and said, go, go ahead and don't ask Papa. You never knew. It was a constant adventure, a constant excitement to meet you. And always a bit, one was always a bit trembling because one never knew what he would say or do. Okay. But as a general, I would say he was in the contact most warm, he had a tremendous sense of humor, he loved joking whenever he tried. Whenever he could, he tried to get you out of your problem with a joke and make you laugh at yourself. Naturally, certain tragic problems you couldn't deal that way, and then he met you differently. But he, he had a great common sense, he had a tremendous fantasy, <coughs> and he always, he, <coughs> he always spread around him an atmosphere of now comes the festival, now something exciting is going to happen. Yes. I would say the one quality Jung never had, it was never boring. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. This morning you speak about uh, mm, the uh, active imagination yes. and its relationships with other new techniques, yes. psyche techniques. Yes. I want to know if you uh, think that there is a relationship between psychodrama the group therapy uh, funded in uh, Wien and yes, in yes. States by Moreno yes, and I his know. followers and uh, active imagination. Because uh, in each technique, psychodrama and active imagination, the passion uh, realizes and, uh, something and uh, knows his creation and uh, wills. Uh, well, this creation. And so I want to know if uh, for you to realize in uh, pictures of imagination or to realize with the body, uh, the emotion, mm -hmm. uh, the actors, uh, the scene, the theater, are uh, similar things or not for you? Uh, for me they are similar things but they are still below to what I call the expression of the fantasy okay. which is the third stage of the active imagination. The third the th stage? The third stage, if you think of my lecture where I put forth yes. stages. And it doesn't reach uh, the next stage which would be the lonely ethical confrontation where you, ha you can't do that in presence of other people. Anymore. Um, uh, Moreno, in some papers, remembers that uh, uh, any patient, uh, qualche paziente, mm -hmm. uh, tailored to him uh, that uh, a monster or another mm -hmm. person of fantasy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, lo spaventava, mm -hmm. lo terrorizzava. No? So Moreno said, well, mm -hmm. uh, let's look. Mm -hmm. This uh, dialogue, this confrontation, mm -hmm. I uh, shall be uh, the monster yes. and the other. Yes. You must uh, begin able mm -hmm. to, uh, to make other, uh, other responses. Uh, responses uh, that are of a new kind mm -hmm. of your normal response. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? That is uh, what I call guided imagination, guided where the analyst guides it. Because the th analyst is active. Yes, right? and he says, you must uh, now look at me as if I were the monster, and you must try to have other reactions. You must, you must. Yes. That's guiding. But in, uh, in each case, uh, is it possible to say that uh, the imaginary is uh, very important? Yes. Yes. It has the positive aspect that it releases its imagination. 
And that is tremendously important and this does generally a lot of help if one can release or free the capacity of imagination in a patient. Yes. But it isn't active imagination. Yes. It's that is still something different. Okay. And why it isn't active imagination? Why? Because the patient is not confronted with it alone, without guidance, except his own inner guidance. And because it is not a play as if. It, okay. You see, that is an as if. You do as if the man yes, were it, a monster. It, it, yes. In a real active imagination, you meet the monster. Yes, yes. The real monster. Yes. There is another kind of psychodrama in Europe, uh, mm -hmm. starting from France, about Le Bovici, Yatkin, mm -hmm. uh, Kestenberg, uh, mm -hmm. Dianzi, mm -hmm. uh, Le Moyen. Mm -hmm. uh, these authors uh, use a psychodrama mm -hmm. in a, another direction mm -hmm. because they think it's not good for the patient uh, to dialogue with the imaginary. So, they never um, uh, make it possible to play mm -hmm. uh, fantasy scenes, mm -hmm. scenes of uh, hope, of mm -hmm. wishful thinking, mm -hmm. but just real dreams mm -hmm. and real uh, remembers mm -hmm. of uh, old uh, events. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you think of this uh, other no, thing? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing to tell you the honest truth. That blocks just the unconscious. And that is just doing what the patient does all the time. If you have a neurotic patient, he always thinks, if he's going to marry me or if he's not going to marry me, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's what the mill goes, uh, the head goes all the time to think about real things and situations and the memories and so on. That's the train of thoughts we want to get people away from. Oh, they think that uh, um, the patient must reach the real and must uh, uh, go out of the imaginary. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, think yeah. the contrary of That's morality. contrary to, there to is, us, yes. There is not uh, um, uh, little imagining. There is too much imagining and there is little reality. Well, that, so could be, that could be that could be recommendable in certain psychotic cases who have lost contact with reality. Of course, in fact, and there is, naturally uh, you might use such techniques, but you can do that much easier. Yeah. Jung, for instance, if if somebody was flying away in the unconscious, he said, "Tell me what had you this morning at breakfast." <laughs> <laughs> and bang, there you were on the floor again. You see, you had to enumerate what you had for breakfast. What you said this morning about the boomerang effect yes. and the youngest uh, help that yes. you did you, um, is uh, in this um, kind of work any relationship with uh, the technique of work with psychotics uh, in what uh, the therapist must be a little in and a yes, little yes, out? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. One is always a bit infected, and one has to be infected in order to understand. Otherwise, one has no understanding. I know that Jung said once to a colleague of mine who asked him, shall I become a therapist? He said, yes, I think you have talent. You have only one drawback. You are a bit too normal. <laughs> <laughs> you will have, and I see it because I know that colleague very well. And whenever his patient become very wild, the, the colleague gets frightened. He has no more empathy. I'm more crazy, so I say, oh, this isn't cra yet crazy, that I can still feel, feel my way into. No, no, you needn't be worried, that isn't yet bad. But my p colleague who is so normal gets frightened, says, but that is not normal, <laughs> you see? So that's why most psychologists are a bit crazy, and it's quite useful. Okay, I understand. Uh, so, you say there is a danger to reach magic in any sense? Yes, because is of the boomerang effect. A real, that can even release the psychosis in the one who does it. Yes. Most, for instance, in folk, if you investigate magicians, you if you investigate simple magicians, you know, yeah. they live still in every uh, lower population. Yeah. They are generally borderlines. Borderline, of yeah. course, I know. And that is very often, they haven't been, they, it comes from the boomerang effect. This, uh, could this aspect explain the bad interest for Jung of many people 
were real near to astrology, uh, pseudo magic, uh, uh, irrational, and so on. Well, you see, in all those arts, there is a tremendous amount of psychological truth uh, buried, but it's just a bit wrong. A bit wrong. There's a lot of psychological insight, but it has just the wrong term. Yes. And that's why people are attracted and fascinated. They know there's something true there. But then they fall into its wrongness. What do you think is, uh, in, in, in simple terms, the main difference between white and the black magic? In the white magic, the magician... The, 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 the difference mag is in the technique or no, in, in the, the aims. aims. In, in the, the white aims. magic, the magician wants to help. Or to cure, and in the black magic, he wants to uh, to give vent to his hatred or to his wish to destroy somebody, and so on. So, could it be possible to say, in the sense of uh, Miguel Serrano's book, The Hermetic Theater? I mm -hmm. don't know if you yes, read it. I, yes. That, in any sense, Jung could be compared with a white, uh, white that. Because, because Jung did not know, because Jung would not, was very much again being po what he called possessed by the good. Possessed by the good. good you see, uh, most people when they are possessed, they are possessed by evil. They want to destroy yeah, yes, political yes, yes, enemy yes, 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 or yes, personal yes. enemy or God knows yes. what. But you can also be possessed by what you think the good. You want to change society, yes, yes. bring the gold.